it's funny how it's different now that I got somebody. Yeah, it's funny. Hey guys, Mike Arcangelo here. A little bit of a different video today. A lot of you have been asking me over the last several months uh, to make a tutorial about how I make my vocals, how I edit them, how I mix them, how I produce them. And it's taken me a while to get to it. I'm finally settled in, in my new studio in Los Angeles, and here it is. So we're going to get right into it. Um, I record most of my vocals through this Audio-Technica 3035, which I've been using for about 10 years. Um, just like the way it sounds, it's really not that expensive. You can get one, although I don't think they make new ones anymore. You'd have to get them used. Uh, other things I record through my SM7B. For the last year and a half or so, I've been running everything through this preamp that I have. It's the Universal Audio uh, Solo 610. Uh, it's a tube preamp. It sounds great. It has some parameters where you can adjust the amount of tube sound, like sort of the color of the sound, which is really great. Um, I utilize that pretty much on every vocal now. And then I run from my preamp into an outboard compressor uh, by Warm Audio. It's the Warm Audio WA-2A. And it's modeled after the classic Teletronics LA-2A compressor. It's a tube opto compressor. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the LA-2A. I haven't really gotten a chance to record much through the classic LA-2A, so I can't really speak to how exactly they compare. All I know is the WA-2A sounds great on my voice, and that's really all that matters. So after I run it through that outboard gear, I go into my Scarlett Focusrite 2i2 uh, interface, and that runs into Pro Tools. I record everything on Pro Tools. So all the other signal processing is in the box, so we'll get into that in a moment. One more thing I want to say before we get into this is I don't really know what experience level to gear this towards. I'm just going to take you straight through what I do, and uh, if you find that it's a little hard to follow, feel free to drop a comment. I will absolutely help you through anything. I just figured there's so many tutorials out there for beginners already, and you guys have been asking how I mix my vocals, so rather than just give you a recording tutorial, I'm going to give you a... Mike Arcangelo vocal tutorial. <laughs> so let's get into it. All right, guys. So here we are in the session. Of course, the most important thing for a vocal session, mixing or recording, is the vibe. And that's why we got the TikTok lights on and we got the nano leaf panels on just to finish it off. Most important part is the vibe. <laughs> but also, the vocal chain is pretty important. <laughs> so let's go through some of that. Uh, uh, I'm working with Funny, uh, me and Corey. Uh, it's a song by Zed and Jasmine Thompson. I will link this video in the description if you haven't seen it, but we're just going to jump right in with the this like soft little chorus thing here. I'm going to play everything together, and then I'll start soloing some things. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me. How you couldn't give me everything, and now you want it from me. It's funny how it's different now that Okay, so let's solo just my vocals on that, since that's what we're going to be looking at. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me, how you couldn't give me everything, and now you want it from me. Yeah, it's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. Okay, this is, I, I picked this spot because... It, it, there's just one vocal track going on here, so it's it's nice to just jump in and see kind of what's going on without a bunch of harmonies and stuff like that. So, uh, you guys asked how I edit my vocals. I'll quickly take you through that. Um, I sing as many takes as I want on a part, and then uh, with each take, you know, I might sing it with a little bit of a different approach here and there. You know, maybe on one take I'll be a little more breathy, and on the next take I'll be a little more clear. And I'll just kind of blend and, and experiment. I, I like to experiment while I'm recording. That way, if I do something I really like, I don't say, oh, let me try to recreate that. Um, so in some cases, I'll do, you know, here there's like eight or nine takes. In other cases, I'll do two takes. In other, takes, in other cases, I'll do like 40 takes, you know, if I'm really like trying to work something out. Um, it really just depends on the part and the song and the project. So anyway, for something like this, I would just... As I'm uh, comping my vocals, which is creating a compilation of them, meaning like you're 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 creating like the best take of everything that you want to use, uh, I'll just go one by one and listen line by line to each take. So I'll go, you know, something like this. It's funny how you miss me. It's funny how you miss me. It's funny how you miss me. And I'll go through all of these and. 
uh, in those last two, I didn't really like how I said, funny how you miss me. So I'll try to find one like this. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me. How you I love how that's just legato. Everything's so connected. Everything's just, it's like a steady stream of air the whole time. So that's the, the take that I would choose. Um, and that's what I ended up choosing. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me. How you couldn't give me everything. And now you want And then I might take me. a it's word from here or there on different takes. Got somebody, uh, it's funny. Okay, so that's basically how I edit my vocals. I listen back to all the takes that I did, and I choose my favorites, and then I create a comp, and that's it. So let's go through the vocal chain on a lead vocal track like the one we're looking at now. Uh, I will show you each individual piece of the chain, and then I will bypass everything and show you how it just sounds raw. And then, um, you know, re-enable everything and, and we'll see what they do. Um, so I always start with the compressor. Uh, I, this is, a lot of the stuff I use is actually pretty standard stuff that you would get with your first copy of Pro Tools. And the reason for that is I didn't really have a lot when I first started producing. And I had to use the tools that I was given. And it's not always about having the most expensive piece of gear or the most expensive plugin or whatever. It's what you do with it. Um, and I've always learned that I've always thought that I've always sort of adopted that mentality when I, when I, you know, when I work on anything artistic. Um, so I always start with this compressor. Uh, then I go to an EQ, this EQ curve changes based on the microphone I'm using, based on the singer, based on the studio. So this, for instance, this song was recorded in my old studio. This EQ curve has changed since I started here in my studio in LA. Uh, next, I go to, uh, oh, well, actually, a little bit about this EQ. So you'll see that I roll off a lot of low frequencies here uh, just to get rid of some of the proximity effect. Um, usually when I record quieter parts like this, I'm like right on the microphone. Um, so there's a little bit of proximity effect. And I like being on top of the microphone because you get like this really intimate, close, um, you know, breathy kind of airy vibe. And you can hear, it, it just sounds more intimate, I guess. Um, but the downside of that is you get proximity effects. So you get a lot of low frequency buildup. So I roll off the low frequencies up to about 180. Um, and then you see a little dip between 500 and 600 Hertz, a little bump at, uh, 2k and then a big bump at 20 kilohertz. I just like to add a little bit of extra shimmer and sparkle, um, to my voice. I just kind of like the way that sounds. Okay. And then I go to a de -esser. And the de-esser, you can see the settings there. It's 8.3 kilohertz. This will be different based on your voice. A um, little bit of tuning on there. And then I go to another compressor with the CLA 2A. Uh, I love this piece of, or I love this software. It's it's similar to the, uh, well, it's modeled after the Teletronics LA 2A, just like my outboard compressor is. Um, you want to use several stages of compression. So this is usually the second compressor that I'll go to. So this first compressor does kind of some heavy lifting. And then this second compressor, I don't like to tip this past like two, maybe three dB on some louder parts, but really I try to keep it around no more than two dB of, uh, of compression. And then I go to a third compressor, the Arvox compressor. Um, and then this all routes, um, you see that this is going out into bus 17 and 18. So that's going to a vocal bus down here. Uh, that's the one called Mic Vocal Bus. And I have a few more things on here. So all of my lead vocals, in fact, all of my vocals, uh, backing and lead, are going to this Mic Vocal Bus. And they're all being, uh, they're all going through this enhancer. Uh, it's an air plugin. And I just give a bump in the high and the lows. And then uh, a little tiny EQ here that's really not doing much. Just a 0.7 bump at like 17 kilohertz. Um, that's just sort of used, I, I sometimes do this just to kind of separate my vocals from the mix. Like maybe they're being a little buried by something and I feel like I need to kind of give it a little push. So that's what that's doing. Then I have the CLA vocals plug-in on here, adding a little bit more uh, high frequencies there. You see it's set to the top setting. It's about 1.1 dB boost. Um, this isn't doing anything. This I'm, is an EQ that I'm just using as a spectral analyzer so I can see what's going on with all the vocals. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me. It's really helpful when you have a lot of vocals going on at one time.
time to see if there are any problem frequencies or any frequencies that are sticking out. Um, it, it's it's just a nice little tool if, if you can't really hear what's going on or you're having trouble identifying uh, what sort of problem frequencies there may be. Okay, so then this vocal bus, this, this aux um, track is going to the both vocal bus. Again, Corey's on this track too, so she has her own vocal bus. They're both being sent to this. Uh, and this just has a couple compressors on it. So it has the CLA-2A again. Uh, and once again, I'll, I'll make sure that doesn't push more than 2 dB of compression out. Then it goes to the SSL, the G Master bus compressor. Uh, this one I also try to keep the 2 dB. If this goes above 2 dB of compression, I've noticed that it gets like really strange. <laughs> so I have this set to the, uh, the subtle glue uh, preset, and then I just sort of uh, adjust the threshold, um, you know, to make it not go above 2 dB of compression, because like I said, it gets a little weird if it goes beyond that, uh, a little too over compressed. And then there's a final little EQ on here just to clean some things up on the both vocal bus. When you have a bunch of vocal tracks, and there are a lot of vocal tracks on this song, um, sometimes frequencies can pile up with each other and it gets to be a lot. So this is just on there at the end, and you see there's some pretty harsh cuts here. Uh, about 6 dB at 879 hertz, and then another 5.8 dB dip at about um, 2,000 kilohertz, or 2,200. So that's that. That is the vocal chain, um, except for the time-based effects, which we'll get into now, these sends. Um, all of my time-based effects, I always bus, rather than putting, and time-based effects being reverbs, delays, choruses, things like that. Uh, I bust those rather than putting them directly on the track as an insert because that way you don't interrupt the um, the direct signal. You still get the full direct signal from your track, but you're just kind of splitting the signal and sending it to these bust reverbs and delays. So what I have here first is uh, D-verb on bus 1 and 2. And I'll show you that I'll give you the breakdown of all the settings in a second, but just so I don't have to scroll back and forth, I'll just take you down this list. Then I have a different sort of reverb right here. Um, and I believe that is, we'll take a look in a second, like I said, but I think it's sound toys. Uh, and then, and it's a plate reverb. And then there's a third reverb, which is also D-verb, which has a longer tail on it, a longer decay. And then a stereo delay on bus 23 and 24. And then a Another stereo delay, but this isn't acting as a delay. It's actually being used as a thickener, and I'll show you. It's a really cool trick that I'll show you in a second here. So I'll take you down to a couple of those. Like I said, bus 1 and 2's got D-verb on it. There are the settings there. Not that long of a decay, just 3.7 seconds. Um, this is that bus 5 and 6 D-verb. You can see, compared to the last one, this, got, this has some, some pre-delay on it, 24 milliseconds. Uh, 9.1 second tail. That's kind of long. And then a little bit of low pass filtering. Um, and then that that reverb that was in the middle, I said, was a plate reverb. That's bus 910. So it is sound toys. It's, it's a, a perfect plate that I'm using. A little bit over two seconds. And I have a crazy EQ on this. <laughs> that's like a really wild curve. And then there's a stereo delay that's sort of like your your regular stereo delay. I have it set to clean ping pong and eighth notes on either side, made sure that the tempo was in line with the actual song. But then this other stereo delay that I mentioned, that's not really acting like a delay. It's a thickener. That's on bus seven, eight. Um, you can see here, what I did is I set the speed of the left side to 25 milliseconds and the speed of the right side to 53 milliseconds. So you're not hearing a lot of slap back. You're actually getting like this widening effect. So I'll show you that up here on the track we were just wor working on. Um, you just got to kind of blend it into taste, but I'll show you what it does here. It's really cool. It's funny how you miss me. Watch when I raise it up here. You could ever love me. How you couldn't give me everything. And now you want it for Cut it out. Me. It's funny how it's different. For oh, Pro Tools gave up. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the difference there. It's It, it doesn't sound like a delay. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love. It's achieving like this really wide effect. And it's just because it's by virtue of the fact that you have the delay set to one speed on the left side and a different speed on the right side. So uh, you just end up blending that into taste and you get something like this. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me. Pretty nice. It's just a nice thick sound. Um, so let's take this stuff off. It's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me. How you couldn't give me everything and now you want it 
from me yeah, it's funny how it's different now that i got somebody yeah, it's funny and granted you know what we do have some stuff on it down here but there's not much you can hear how clean that recording is itself that's important um you don't hear a lot of the room it's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me and you hear some of that proximity effect a lot of like k like a lot of like boominess so when you put some of this stuff on we'll put it on kind of one by one here it's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me how you couldn't give me everything and now you want it from me yeah, it's funny how it's so that's the whole sound and then we add some of our reverbs and delays in it's funny how you miss me more than you could ever love me how you couldn't give me everything and that's the vocal sound there that's that's the chain Okay, so now that we've gone through the vocal chain, I'm going to show you a little bit of how I build an arrangement of a vocal. Uh, so let's start with the lead vocals here in a louder part. I'll play the part that I'm going to be taking you through here. Okay, pretty powerful. Uh, and what's going on here is... I recorded one lead vocal and then I doubled it two times and I panned those doubles hard left and hard right. So that's a really common trick. Um, so I'll, I'll solo each of those. Here's just the lead vocal. Cause her lips are on my lips and both my hands are on her body. Cool little delay there. Um, in addition to the stuff that I just showed you on the other vocal chain, there's an extra mono delay here that is just panned a little bit to the right, about 19% to the right, and that's doing a little bit more work uh, in the delay department. <laughs> uh, so anyway, like I said, I doubled this lead vocal twice, so this is the sound of those two doubles. Cause her lips are on my lips and both my hands are on her body. So now you can see with all three of these, I'll show you. Cause her lips are and both my hands are on a body Funny how it's different now that I got somebody Yeah, it's funny It's a really nice full sound when you do that It's different than using this stereo, you know, uh, the stereo delay Like that thickening trick that I showed you And it's even different from using something like the CLA vocals, widener Anything, any, any wideners That's great to use for some things But you're never going to get this effect unless you really just record all the takes because you want the imperfections of all the different takes you don't want it to just be exact you don't want to just like copy and paste your your lead vocal and say oh i doubled my vocals it's not really the same thing so that's that um and then under this i also sang a low octave of what i was singing there to fill out the sound a little more if i wanted cause her lips are on my solo that. lips and both my hands are on her body yeah it's funny how it's different now that i got somebody yeah it's funny and i kind of choked that off i took a lot of the low frequencies off i guess uh ironically it's a low octave vocal but it just sort of fit the mix better uh there's already bass in this song and it, it's just it was just a mixed decision anyway but those four tracks together, the the lead vocal, the two double vocals, and the low vocal sound like this. If I wanted Cause her lips are on my lips and both my hands are on her body. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody. Yeah, it's funny. Then, of course, you add Corey's tracks in here and it gets even bigger. If I wanted Cause her lips are on my lips and both my hands are You hear that delay and that reverb kind of living on there on the funny. So that's that. And then uh, let me take you to a section where there's just so many vocals going on. <laughs> and I'll show you how I created uh, space for everything. Let's choose this section right here. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody. Yeah, it's funny. That's a lot of simultaneous vocals. That's four, five from Corey, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Unless I counted wrong, I think fourteen from me, and whatever I said from Corey, five. 
five. <laughs> That's 19 vocals going at once. And it's funny how it's different now that I got somebody. Yeah, it's funny. You're not going to not make that sound like it's all stepping on each other. They're all stepping on each other unless you create the space for them. So you do that with EQ. You do it with uh, panning. You do it with... There's a lot of different coloring you can do. Uh, EQ is the big one. Um, panning is another huge one that I rely on a lot. So you can see that these pans are set pretty differently. Um, we'll go back up to my vocals since there's 14 of them. <laughs> so we have the lead vocal here and the two doubles, which are panned hard left and hard right, like I mentioned. Then we have some harmonies down here. Um, we have this harmony that's right up the middle and this harmony that has a doubler on it. So like I said, that's a different effect than recording two double tracks and panning them hard left, hard right. Let's hear what that sounds like just soloed. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. That, along with the main harmony track. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. Is just a little bit different than this, where they're actually three individually recorded tracks yeah it's funny how it's different now that i got somebody yeah it's funny that's just a little more in your face but this is a harmony so i didn't really want it in your face yeah it's funny how it's different now that i got somebody yeah it's funny now those are pretty dissonant but when you add in the rest of these harmonies it becomes really interesting so let's go down to these backing vocals and we can look at the panning on those. There's a little less processing going on on these backing vocals and they're all going to their own backing vocal bus, which has some other interesting stuff on it. Got another EQ here, trimming off the highs and the lows so they don't step on all the lead vocals. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to boost at 20K, like four to five dB on my lead vocal. I wasn't going to do that on my backing vocal because otherwise you'd just be stacking the same frequencies on top of each other and it gets to be a mess. So this is how you create space. Use EQ, like I mentioned. Uh, then there's also the API 2500 compressor on here, which is a really great tool. It's awesome. I would definitely recommend this plugin. And then uh, the CLA vocal plugin with the roof setting on this, uh, this treble EQ, 3.8 dB up and then a little bit more compression there with the push setting at about 5 dB. And then there is some reverb on here as well. And then those are all going to the mic vocal bus, which is then going to the both vocal bus. So there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not too complicated, but you got to make sure everything's routed properly. <laughs> um, so if we just listen to these backing vocals, uh, I, I, I don't think I have a group for these, so I'll just have to solo them individually. But... I'll just show you what's going on with those. Um, but before we do, we can see that the panning, they're not fully 100-100 because we already have stuff in the 100-100 space. You have this doubler sending this harmony to 100-100. You have these doubled tracks themselves at 100-100. Some of Corey's tracks are at 100% and 100%. So I wanted to fill out the stereo space. If you think of the stereo space like a, like a big 180-degree semicircle, those two things are over here and my lead vocals are over here. I got to start filling in some of this space. So, but I also wanted these backing vocals to be pretty wide. So these are at like 95, 95, 92, 92, 86, 86. I'm pretty sure I have some at 75, 75 from Corey. Yeah, 76, 76 from Corey. So I'm really just like filling in all the space and letting everything have their own, have its own spot. So let's play these and see what they sound like. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. Pretty cool. So what I do here is, with every harmony I recorded on these backing vocals, I just doubled each of them. There's, so there's two of each, and there's one on the left, one on the right. So one by one, here we go. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. Okay, here's the next one. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. Okay, and the next one. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. And the last one. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. Now, this actually might be the group for these. Yes. 
It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. And then with all of my leads and everything else, it sounds, I have to find the group, <laughs> sounds like this. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. And then with Corey, it sounds like this. It's funny how it's different now that I got somebody, yeah, it's funny. And with the whole track, it sounds like this. And that's how you do it. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, any questions, of course, let me know. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Spotify. I've got a lot of new music coming out this year. I'm really excited to share it with you. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's funny how you call it